Hi guys, my name is Subtruder, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Now, this last week, I've been a little less active than I usually would have been. I've got, I've got some bits and pieces to catch up on because it was... Um, I had a whole load of stuff to do at the beginning of the week. I missed a blog post, which I'll get to at some point. Um, but ultimately, between um, my four-year anniversary of being together with Hannah and a couple of other things that I've been trying to chase up and do, I kind of ran out of time. Um, so uh, I'll be getting back to those things this week. But one of the things that I, I came across the last uh, few days that I wanted to, to come and touch on was uh, something that I, I kind of had in mind to do a video on for a while, but didn't necessarily think it was the most prominent thing to touch on. Um, but as I had someone coming to me the other day and, and having a chat about how they could improve their skills in this area, I figured I'd bring it to you guys as well. And that area is public speaking. Now, this is something that I've had to do on and off when I've been teaching classes, when I've been training groups, when I've been doing group coaching sessions, uh, when I've been talking to large groups of clients or customers, um, the largest of which has probably been about 500-ish people in a room. Um, when giving presentations to my boss or to his boss or to whoever. Um, and, and so as a result, like public speaking was something that I was never good at in school. I froze up. I always tried to be too particular and so ended up falling over my own words. And I, I just quite frankly sucked at it. So coming forward to from the end of me in school, jumping into um, spaces that I had to present, I had to hold a class's attention, I had to work with people um, by presenting large amounts of information to them or otherwise um, just being responsible for the passing on of information in one way or another to large groups of people. Be they angry customers who may very well demand a refund if I, I don't present to them properly or be it a group of people that I'm going to have to rely on to do a good job and therefore need to impart all the information to them as best I can. Uh, it, it all comes down to, to just being comfortable in that space and obviously people have different levels of comfort but there are a few things that people tend to slip up on and, and get stuck in when it comes to uh, public speaking and presenting to people that I kind of want to touch on. So I've got five things here, five little little areas that you can uh, either change up or take a look at to try and improve how you approach public speaking and how you actually speak and present uh, to large groups anyway. Now a lot of lot of people may be uh, concerned that I'm going to go in and basically just, just rip apart things like um, uh, stage fright and stuff like that. It happens and sometimes you can't control it happening. Uh, I've never been one to have that impact me personally. So I'm not going to be touching on that all that much. I'm going to be talking about ways to just streamline and better kind of generate um, uh, an atmosphere or, or a way that you can work to, to put um, the information across to whatever public group that you are speaking to, whatever large group you are speaking to, um, in, a, in a way that just works better. Yeah, because that seems to be the main stumbling block. People aren't necessarily afraid of standing up in front of people or, or dealing with large groups or presenting to people who possibly have more authority than they do. It tends to be much more uh, self-doubt around certain issues because they've not been able to perform before. They've not had to perform in that way before. And so that's where I kind of want to touch on rather than just going stage fright. It, 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 this is how you get over it. So anyway, the first thing, and this is one thing that everybody the, the I used to teach with got wrong and kind of fell into the trap of. And this was, uh, they were encouraged to write scripts, very specific scripts that you were, that they would, they would stick to and the, that they would have responses that they'd want students to give before they moved on. And it would all be very overly structured for the situation that they were going into. The thing to do is to, mem to, to memorize concepts, not a script. You're not an actor. You're there to present information. You know, if, if you're um, 
there to present the information, the data, the stuff that you have observed through working through the last quarter in your business, in your, your place of work, then memorizing the concepts and just what's coming next and the, the larger elements of it will allow you to talk more fluidly and in a more kind of helpful and, and kind of experiential way that people will be able to relate to rather than um, having this very specific script that the, you can go and touch in on and, and try and hope that people will get to the right points and respond in the right ways, have the right questions. But if you haven't memorized the concepts that when you get to the end of your, your presentation or your speech or whatever else, if someone has a question, then there's a good chance that because you've only focused on learning that by rote, that little thing that you had decided to focus on, if they then ask you to expand on that idea or how you feel it could be touched on or how, how it could be uh, better supported or whatever, you may not have those answers and you may not be able to converse on that as readily just because you were focused on something so narrow. So again, memorizing concepts like uh, the best practice stuff that you have to do for sales, for instance, or the the elements around uh, that, that you have to base your class around, or the things in particular that you want to kind of touch on in regards to the person that you're giving a speech about as a best man or something like that. You know, having those those conceptual things rather than a very specific script of every single kind of sentence and line that you have to say. We've all seen those people giving things like best man speeches and, and giving classes from a textbook where they're stumbling over themselves, where they're having to always look down and they're not most engaging because they're going through their flip cards, they've got them in the wrong order, they're having to shuffle and, and faff rather than just stand up and present. And to an extent, this is kind of one of the reasons why if you ask me for an impromptu speech on a thing, you're going to get something very limited because I probably won't care enough about it and I won't have that extra information that I would want to give anything more expansive um, so you know there we go but there are some other reasons as to my own personal preferences that we'll get onto in a bit now the second thing is you know as people are approaching as people are coming in settling down chat with them as they come in um, this isn't always possible uh, but for instance there have been some speakers that I've been to see who, when they aren't able to come out and speak directly to the people that have turned up as their audience, they have someone else go out and do it. And they will give an inclination of, of where the, the kind of feeling is in the crowd, who need, who might be, be looking for something specific, what people are looking for, why they're there. Um, but otherwise, like when I was uh, teaching or when I've been training and I've had people coming in, you know, just in, in dribs and drabs before we start, you know, sit down and get on, on to what we need to cover, you know, welcoming people, saying hello, gaining kind of names and things like that if it's not a group that you're used to seeing or teaching or training or working with or whatever, you know, have a have a quick chat with them as they come in just to gain engagement, just to make sure that the, they're, they're kind of in the right place and know what to expect in some instances and whatever else. You know, you'll probably have a little preamble beforehand as part of your presentation anyway, but if this is something that, that is maybe a little more foreign to you, have a chat with those people as they come in because it'll not just put them at ease, it'll put you at ease. You'll feel more connected to those people and so talking to them will be a little bit easier. You know, there are lots of people who go, do you know what, I can do everything in front of complete strangers but doing it in front of friends is so much harder. And yeah, there's a reason for that and part of it is that they are too set in that comfort zone that you have yeah you, you can't progress you can't expand you can't project into that stretch zone where you can do your best work if if those friends of yours are reminding you of what's in the comfort zone of where your comfort zone is and then continually trying to pull you back into it through no fault of their own by the way they may be there to watch you or to add support or whatever else um but like having them there like I, I personally know that having, say, Hannah there kind of front and centre where my attention is always going to be drawn to her is going to be one of those things that draws me back out of where I need to be presenting and, and into that space where I want to be 
focused on her or I want to be focused on the my, my comfort. I'm going to be worried about what, she, you know, of one of the very small number of people who have, whose opinion actually matters to me. I'm going to be concerned about what she thinks. If I mess up, what will she uh, give me as feedback later and all that kind of thing. It all kind of mixes together into something that puts me kind of off balance. So taking my attention off those people and talking to the rest of the audience, greeting people as they come in and all the rest of it, can still allow me that level of familiarity with why those people are there, but not pull me completely back into a comfort zone space because they are still strangers. So it, it's, it's a way of making yourself comfortable without being too comfortable. Um, obviously, people have their different thresholds on that, but, you know, for the most part, being distracted by the overly familiar is something that can be just as detrimental to present to presentations, to, to lessons, to whatever it is that you're using public speaking skills for, as um, being completely unfamiliar with everyone and being kind of left isolated on this stage with all of these eyes watching you. Um, the next thing is is kind of tailor your tailor and, and kind of develop your audio visual stuff you know if you're having to give a presentation if you're having to work with a class where you've got something up on a, a blackboard or a whiteboard or on a projector or whatever else um, kind of tailor it to the way that you feel comfortable as an example there was one particular very long like two hour presentation I had to give at one point which excuse me which was tough it was a lot of information and it was in a very specific order and it as much as I had notes on the table in front of me obviously I wanted to more interact with the board of like I think it was 15 odd people not a huge amount of people but enough with that amount of information that it was a bit taxing to go through um, you know I wanted to engage with them, them more so and make sure that everything was getting across to them because there was a lot of important information there and so as a result, at the bottom of each slide, just in a very, I mean, it was a, a grey silver background, very, very pale grey lettering. I just put in the very bottom corner where no one else would really see it because they weren't looking for it. Um, I just put the, the next kind of header and the next couple of things just across the bottom of the slide to tell me what was coming up next so that I could, if I needed to refer back to notes, I could just quickly flick. Uh, to the right page, having it all marked, and then being able to to relate back uh, to it once the slide had come up to go, right, okay, we've been through this slide, click, there's the next slide, and I already know what it was going to be, and I didn't have to worry about which thing was coming next and which part of my script I needed to follow or whatever else because I knew all the concepts, I had all the data there in front of me to refer to, and then on top of that, all, all I needed was a reminder of, of what was coming next. In regards to uh, kind of visuals and audio for uh, your your um, the the people that you're presenting to your audience, it becomes a case of you know adding what maybe they would expect, finding things that are funny or entertaining that would pull them back out if you're talking about something very serious, then spinning it round and making a joke of something, a well-known meme or whatever else, just inserting that in there just to have that little tension and release curve, that thing that good movies do. You know, you have that 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 moment of seriousness where it's a bit of a sink in emotion, either to, down to a neutral point or where actually you might be upset or sad or angry or feeling quite passive through it where you're just absorbing the information. And then you've got something that's, that shakes them out of that as a, a joke or something like that that you can just put in there and run with it quite easily uh, and uh, you know obviously it'd have to be in context it would have to work with your other material but it's just something to keep in mind because the number of presentations that I have seen the had nothing else in it yeah it was just here is a pie chart I'm going to talk over this pie chart here is the next pie, pie chart there is a bar graph and, I'm, and it was just so dry and as a result you could see the, the people that were that were falling asleep, that weren't particularly engaged, that they were maybe noting down the information. And especially if it's one of these things where, yes, you are going to have to email your presentation, the slides to everybody else so that they have copies of the information, they may very well just not be paying attention to you at all. 
because there's nothing else that you are offering other than just a read through of each slide. So the next the next thing is is kind of related to the last two where we're tailoring our, our stuff for our, our audience and where we've been interacting with people as they've been coming in. Interact with your audience throughout. La uh, the, the, the one thing that gets to me a lot of the time is um, where people are like, oh, oh no, 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 ask questions at the end. It's like, no, 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 let them ask a question right now because if they've got a question, then you know maybe allow allow yourself to just finish talking, tell them that they need to raise their hands or whatever else. But then if they've raised their hand, finish what you're talking through on the slide and then have them ask their question. Because otherwise there's there's this disconnect where what was relevant, the things that were coming up, even if the answer that you're going to give is, oh, I cover that in the next slide. Um, you know, at least then they know that an answer is coming and then if the answer that they were looking for isn't quite there they can raise their hand again and continue that that interaction that conversation um public speaking is very much a kind of two-way street you do need that interaction to know that what you're saying is being kind of absorbed and and whether or not what you're saying is effective for those people to take things on board have them res kind of repeat messages back to you have them um kind of point out things and, and call on people, not in a harsh kind of teachery way where it's like, oh, you don't seem to be listening, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, but in regards to kind of, you know, you've finished off a section and you go, okay, so who can tell me what the five things were that we've just covered? Yeah, the five things at the beginning that we said we'd cover, have we covered them well enough? Is everybody happy? Yeah, just, just going through those couple of extra things at the end of a section, or allowing questions to happen as they're going, you know that it's it's the the important level of interaction that solidifies things in people's heads and also allows you to just expand on what you're kind of going through and talking about anyway. Then the last thing that I, I want to touch on kind of has something to do with nerves, but is also just more to do with just making yourself comfortable and taking ownership of of what you're doing. And this is where I'm I'm going to kind of touch in more on where I personally would speak and where I wouldn't. Um, and this is a case of you choose your environment. When you're presenting, you get to generate that space for yourself. You get to take it over. Um, and that's something that you need to be able to do. And that needs to be both internal as well as external. So external, you know, one of the things that, that I've talked about a lot is kind of embodied cognition, um, maybe not using that terminology, but in terms of you change the way that you act, you change the way that you feel. So, you know, smile, stand up, you know, straight, don't always be looking down at your notes, relax, have open body language, you know, all of those kind of things. They might be a, feel a little awkward to begin with, but you will get into it and you will, you will, Kind of see the benefit as as you're interacting with your audience they'll be more relaxed they'll be more open to what you're saying you'll be able to relax more and, and take ownership of, of your physical space by just relaxing into where you are and what you're doing but then internally the the kind of taking control of of that space is a bit more difficult because obviously you've got doubts you're trying to think through all that information you're trying to present it and if you don't have those doubts if you're not you know coming across those those kind of things then great good for you but it's still a case of you you there are always going to be uncertains and unknowns and those will prey on people the simplest way i've found to uh, get past it is usually to just not give myself time to think you know, I, I, if I've done my, my work, memorized the, the overarching elements of what I'm presenting, made sure that everything is in good order before I start, you know, had a quick chat and been able to interact with people anyway, then when I'm actually up there, it's about doing, it's not about thinking. It's about working through what's in front of me and focusing on not necessarily the words that I'm saying, but on the people and their concerns rather than um, kind of taking the time to break down what I'm thinking about, what I'm worrying about, where it's coming from. You know, as I've said before, if you 
take time to think. The more time you take to think, the more chances you allow yourself to get bogged down in those thoughts. You start analyzing, analysis turns into paralysis, and then you just kind of stop. And it can be quite hard to shake yourself out of that place um, if you hit that point. And this is why, again, you don't want stumbling blocks in your presentation. You don't want to lose track of your order. You don't want to um, be uh, unexpectedly interrupted. Yeah, which is where I say take questions, but make sure that they're questions on your terms. So it's important to take them in the moment, but make sure that it's not just people yelling stuff out at you. Have them ask kind of at individually raising hands making you know having someone else go around if you if it's a large group uh, and you're allowing them uh, time to feedback or ask questions because of the situation that you're in then you know having people go around with a microphone or having people go around and raise questions um, from people can be particularly useful obviously that's not something that an awful lot of people have that tends to be a much larger audience thing uh, for organized events of one sort or another but again you can still try and be selective about very you know calling on people directly rather than just having all this stuff thrown at you that would interrupt you and knock you out of your working process and quite frankly the the working process the spinning it round to try and take some pressure off yourself where you're in control as soon as you're on stage then it's about you um kind of putting your your uh your camp down laying out your your little battle lines and going right well okay i'm here in my little fortress on my stage with my space to confront your ignorance and bring this stuff to you simple fair enough right um and it, it can you know focus on being helpful and kind of providing stuff for your audience instead of focusing on you and what's going on right in front of you um one of the the um things that I had to do when I was training, doing manager training and, and stuff like that and gaining various qualifications. Um, it was always a, a body of three to five people and it would be like, right, well, you have to come in and present. And one time that I had to do that was great because it was, it was you had four people, I had some stuff to talk about and I had scanned through the stuff beforehand I worked with this stuff every day and so for the most part I went up and I had a chat and I answered some questions and I turned up half of it into a joke because firstly I wasn't taking it very seriously anyway because I had kind of already skipped along from this um, but also it was a case of going well if I'm relaxed if I'm making a joke out of things if I'm engaging with people then it's going to be easier for them to ask me questions it's going to be easier for them to work with me to overcome whatever concerns they have uh, as part of this presentation, as part of this conversation that I'm having with them. You know, lots of people think of a presentation or a speech as a one-way thing. And, you know, it's it's not. You know, you've got many, many more than just one person there. And this is part of the reason why, if you look back at some of my much older videos on the channel, I say much older, a couple of years old, uh, coming up on, then... You know, I was finding it very, very difficult at the time to just talk to an empty room. Like, there's a, a, a lack of feedback that I had grown very used to. And so where usually, if I'm here, if I'm sat reading articles, if I'm talking to people, if I'm sending emails, if I'm I'm doing whatever else, then usually in this space when I'm when I'm working... I'm sat in pretty much complete silence or I might have some music on or another YouTube video or something else like that. And so, yeah, when it came to making that adjustment to public speaking that isn't public, it was taxing. I was stumbling over my words again. I was having to work through all of these issues again purely because there was this weird space that I was now in where I was public speaking without being public and it caused this disconnect. And so, yeah, these things take time. All of these five things that I've just mentioned, you know, uh, choosing your space and taking ownership of it, uh, not allowing yourself time to just kind of beat yourself up and focusing on what your audience wants, interacting with them, enhancing your your uh, audio or your visuals or whatever else that you're bringing with you to this presentation in a way that works best for you and them, 
um, you know, just being comfortable enough to chat with random people as they're coming in to sit down, and how best to memorize the parts of your your presentation or your speech or whatever it is that you're presenting, um, so that you can present it and still have a lot of extra space around it for answering questions and doing other things with it uh, as part of the interaction. All of those things are going to take you so much time and and practice to put together. And whilst in the long, in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to be that much time at all to you, especially when each minute ticks by very slowly when you're up there on a stage and you've got 15 minutes to get all of this information out or whatever. You know, it's it's going to seem like a lot longer than it actually is, just simply because there's there's so many moving pieces and it's you're very hyper aware of it because you're in an uncomfortable state. So, you know, it's it's going to take time, it's going to take practice, but these five things in particular are things that I've used and that there's some of the stuff that I, I just kind of became very much more aware of um, early on when I first started kind of uh, moving on from school and into teaching and then from teaching into management and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's one of these reasons why I don't do big scripted videos. I, I like to be authentic with the way that I'm presenting myself to you. So it's like if I'm, uh, if I'm talking to you guys and I slip up or if I, I do something that, that maybe um, doesn't put the information across in the most succinct way or something like that, you know, then that's just the way I am. You know, that's just the way that I was speaking at the time. But I have my notes, I have my little pieces of paper, I have my notes on my screen that I refer back to just to make sure that I, if there is something that I feel needs to be said, then I can go back and touch on it. Again, I'm memorizing the concepts, not specific kind of script, which does mean that sometimes stuff gets missed. And that's where I feel the, the thing, the biggest difference between this kind of online presentation where I don't have an audience and one where I have an audience um, kind of differ. Because if I miss out something, it's, it might be something glaringly obvious or it might be so, it might just be me misspeaking, uh, using something, saying something euphemistic or, or colloquial instead of being particularly specific with it, then, you know, if I had an audience, if there are people there, then in my experience, they will ask, they will bring up um, the point that, that I have maybe skipped over too quickly or, or not touched on. So if you are speaking to an audience, you have a huge advantage because those people, if you're interacting with them, if you're allowing that interaction, will allow you to make sure, you know, they, they will offer you stuff to patch up the holes in your presentation to, to keep it running and make sure that they get everything that they want out of it. And if that, if that happens, then everyone leaves the auditorium, meeting room, open park space with you and your soapbox, whatever. Um, if, if they leave with this feeling that all of their questions were answered, that they got all of this useful information, <laughs> bless me, then some of that information may very well have been passed to you from them. You know the the prompts for it and the the uh, the desire to know those pieces of information that you might not have thought were relevant or may have forgotten to include. They're going to want it. You can provide it, and then they will leave feeling better, and they'll have a better opinion of you afterwards. And you'll have a, a much greater kind of stake in their esteem. You know, and it's it's all important stuff to to keep track of because. Reputation is unfortunately one of these things that the is never going to go out of you know it's never going to become unpopular. It's always going to be one of these these um, things that is essentially a currency for success, and it can be very difficult to cultivate and generate on a expansive scale that you can use more um, after you have already made a first impression. So you know. Make a lasting impression by making sure that your audience leaves with as much of their their as many of their queries and as much of their um, concerns or, or as many of their other things uh, that you are there to speak on being addressed and and dealt with because otherwise you may very well end up uh, either not being invited back 
or it might just be harder to work with those people in the future. Who knows? But anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are there any other things that you do or have done as a result of public speaking or stage fright, considering we did mention it earlier, but, but um, not in regards to, to my points? Um, if you've got any of those things, I'd love to hear your experiences and I'd love to hear your points that you would add to this list down in the comments below. Otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the video later. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful or interesting, then please drop us a like, share this video and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video later. Take care.